Make Better Wealth Decisions, a podcast that explores how financial advisors' blind spots can harm your investments. I'm your host, John DeGuy, a portfolio manager with Design Securities in Toronto. In this podcast, we'll provide advice on how you can achieve better outcomes by maximizing investments and minimizing taxes. Let's put our thinking caps on as we consciously decide to get smarter about our money. It's always the things you don't expect. What are the factors that will help you have a successful investing experience? This past week, we talked with an executive from SteadyHand, which is a uh, direct-to-investor firm that then offers advice to about 4,000 Canadian households to help them make better investing decisions and to help them with their portfolios. One of the things we talked about is how there are things that are factors that are often overlooked that are critically important to help you to reach your investment goals. Most people talk a lot about active or passive or whether you should be a do-it-yourself investor or working with an advisor. And one of the things that came out was that, in fact, there are other factors that are much more important but don't always get as much airtime from the media and from other advisors and, and people who are commentating. So those factors include starting early. If you're listening and you haven't yet started investing, the water's fine. Get in. Jump in the pool. Don't put your toe in. Jump in with both feet. It's about time that you started doing this. The longer you wait, the harder it's going to be. The second thing is the actual savings rate. A lot of people will say, I can only save a couple hundred dollars a month. And if that's all you can save, then that's all you can save. But a lot of other people can save a bit more. They just don't want to. They would rather have that money to spend on their lifestyle in the here and now rather than putting that money away for their use many decades down the road. It's very difficult for people to imagine their future self. And if you're 30 or 40 years old and you try to imagine yourself at 60 or 70, a lot of people can't really do that. And they can't really fathom the idea of actually no longer earning money, no longer putting money aside and actually drawing down on their portfolio. The sooner you get to starting put money aside and the more money you put aside, the better off you'll be when the time comes to actually end your career and retire. So I want to talk about four actual practical choices you will have when you start to approach your retirement. Let's say you're in your 50s or your 60s, and you come to the realization that if you keep on going the way you've been going, you're not going to reach your goal as you've defined it. So what can you do? Number one, You can obviously do what we talked about a moment ago. You can save more, which is one of the things that I think are one of the better ways of dealing with the problem. Most people can save more if you really get right down to it. They just don't want to, but they have the capacity. They have the means. They just need to have the gumption to actually breathe in, take deep breath and actually realize that what you need to do is to maybe increase your savings rate by 40 or 50%. And instead of saving $200 a month, maybe you can save $300 a month or whatever the number is. The second thing you can do is you can be more aggressive. Now, that's the sort of thing that I strongly urge you not to do in almost all instances, but that's the other way that you can get from A to B more quickly. If you have a portfolio that's getting you 4.5% and you can take more risk and you can get to a portfolio that gets you 5.25 or 5.3 or 5.4, that additional 75 or 80 basis points of marginal return is the sort of thing that will certainly get you retired a couple of years earlier or will, all else being equal, allow you to stay retired for two or three years longer. But you have to be sure that you'll be able to handle the risk and a lot of people can't. The third thing, my personal favorite, is to decide that you're going to retire later. People are living longer than ever before. And it used to be that people would retire at 65 and die at 72. Well, now people are actually retiring a bit earlier at 63 or 64, but they're living to be 84 and 85. And FP Canada's actuarial tables are actually saying that you should be planning to have at least one one person of a couple to live to be the age of 95. So your life expectancy is almost always going to be more than what you think it is. And if you're not planning for that, you're probably going to run out of money before you get to the point where you run out of breath. So be sure you can think about how long you're going to be living. And if you're still healthy and you're still enjoying your work, that means that you don't have to retire at 65. If you're healthy and happy and enjoying your work, retire at 68 or at 70, whatever. 
it does two things. Number one, it allows you to save for an extra three years or five years or whatever it is, but that's also three years or five years that you're not drawing down. So it's a double whammy. You are putting money in to your retirement account and you aren't taking money out. So you're getting a double benefit. There's a real leverage that comes from delaying your retirement a few years. If you can't do any of those three things, or you, for whatever reason, don't or choose not to, but you don't save more, you don't take more risk, you don't retire later, you're going to be left with the fourth option, which is you just are going to have to accept a lesser quality of life, a lower lifestyle, when the retirement does, in fact, roll around. So that's going to be what I would say the worst of all the options, it's the one that I do not want anybody to ever have to encounter. But you may be forced into that conclusion as a default if you don't do the other three. So just be mindful that you have it within your power to do what you need to do to get to your retirement in the way you want. But you need to make a conscious decision to make a better wealth decision for yourself now so that you can get to the goal that you want to get to down the road. John DeGuey is a portfolio manager with Design Securities in Toronto. The views expressed in this program are not to be construed as specific advice. It is recommended that you consult a qualified advisor before taking action. His books, The Professional Financial Advisor 4, Stand Up to the Financial Services Industry and Bullshift are available through Amazon and in bookstores throughout Canada. You can reach John at 647-STAND-UP. That's 647 782 6387 or at jdegui at designedsecurities.ca.